My name is Bobby Prier, born and raised in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, my street name is Big Bob the Hawk. My name is my name is Judson Baycott. I hail from Michigan, and uh, my street name was just Baycott. We were the first Crips to ever be sent to state prison for a murder of any sort. Now I want to show you guys a couple of things. Let me give you that one. Mm. Let me give you that one. And then uh, here's another one. Um, I just gave you guys some articles yeah. from 1972. Ricardo, I mean, James. What is the significance of the leather jacket? It's a status symbol. How extensive is this uh, gang activity to, to find these jackets? He said we've been able to clear 40 robberies in the south end of town where jackets were taken. Even this, even this paper is even stating it wrong. The 16-year-old son of an attorney was stomped and beaten to death by a gang of 20 youths in Hollywood Monday night because he refused to surrender the leather coat he was wearing. Police reported to... No, that's, that's, that, that, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. Officer said Robert, Robert Books Ballou, son of Robert R. Ballou, was a, attacked across the street from the Hollywood Palladium after he had left a rock concert, concert there. He died before an ambulance arrived. The youth of the 15th Russian Street was in the 8th grade in Los Angeles. Man, come on, man. Four companions told police that they were, they were punched and threatened with the same fate as Blue if they didn't spin it. Bobby, if they didn't surrender their jackets. So what they saying is, see, they lied. They lied. Because the only person that got robbed that night was Charles, uh, Charles Alexander. Charles Alexander. He was the only one that got robbed of another coat. And as far as it being four people were robbing Lou, it wasn't but three of them. The it's fat three. boy and the one cuz robbed and Robert Ballou. Robert Ballou. But the, but the guy that got robbed with a leather jacket, you know, people keep saying Robert Ballou. Ballou. It's Robert wrong. Ballou didn't have no leather jacket He had a green suit on. He had a green suit on. And, and what, what, what mystifies me is, you know, uh, it was even stated in court, in our trial, that Robert Ballou was not attacked for a leather coat. He had on a green suit. They described what he had on. Right. He had a green suit on. Now, I did time for a crime I had nothing to do with. Now, you did the same, I guess. Yeah, I didn't have nothing to do with that. I sit back, like, you know, laughing at it, really. I saw the, I saw the robbery. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm about... 15 feet away. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna reconstruct this crime for you right quick. I'm gonna reconstruct this crime. It started in front of the Palladium. I walked up. I seen Big Bob. If I'm wrong at any point, you're gonna get a chance to just stop me, Bob. Right. I seen Big Bob. Bob said, hey. He said, Baker, I've been looking for you. He said, they go cuz. I said, wait. He said, across the street, following that dude. He's, finna, he's gonna take dude's leather coat. Yeah, ran out of jacket. I said, where? And I, I had to jump up to see, cause I was short. And you said, right there. You, and I said, oh, I seen. So I took off across the street. I took off across the street, following a uh, uh, cuz. By the time cuz accosted Charles Alexander, it was about in the middle of the uh, Mark Bloom parking lot. Right. Cause now, cuz is, I had caught up with Cuz. Cuz called dude. Dude stopped and said, turn around. He said, you talking to me? James said, yeah. And he, so he, I guess he thought, you know, James was playing with him. So he turned around and walked off. By that time, James had caught up with him. Once he stopped, James was on him. James grabbed him. He spun around. Robert Ballou and the fat boy kept on walking. Okay, now I'm standing there with James. I'm just standing there. I don't have anything to do with the robbery. I didn't raise a fist. I'm standing there with James. James told dude, hey, I like that leather coat. Dude said, I do too, that's why I bought it. James said, let me have your coat. And before Duke could say anything, James hit him with a right hand in right, the chin. Hit him in the chin. Hit him with, then dude kind of staggered. James took the leather coat off of him. But before James, now here's the key part to all this. When James hit that boy and the boy staggered, here come Robert Ballou. I'm thinking he running towards us. He ran by us while James is robbing his friend. He run by us into a crowd of Compton Cribs. 
no Mac Thompson and who killed Man. Fighting the guy and that thing, I know, you know, we thought he was knocked out, and then later on we found out he had died, you know. And I ain't gonna never forget that word. He got hit in the op silica and swelled his brain up, you know, where his brain couldn't expand through him in the skull, and that's what killed him. You know, but but what, what mystifies me is why why make me the scapegoat? Why make me the scapegoat? And Basically, then, I think because our names were well known in the neighborhood, well known in this park. And we was the guys that was out front basically over just about everybody, even took it there, because they only came out yeah. on weekends. You know, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. <coughs> Sundays they had to go back, took it in. Weekends, they was out. Yeah, you know, I, I, I love my boy to death. You know, took, took, that was my boy, man. You know, but see, for, when me and Bob was, was cripping, it, it, it wasn't no so-called one particular leader of the Crips. You know, everybody had their own crew. Who you ran with? You did what you wanted, but when they had called a Crip meeting, you better be up here. And there was no infighting amongst Crips. There was no killing of Crips. If you had a problem with another Crip, I don't care if you was from Compton, from the East Side or the West Side, if you had a problem with him, call a meeting up at the park, you take care of it. When you left this park, it, it, was was all, it was over with. It was over with. It was all, you act as one, we moved as one. Now, I can't speak on the east side. Only thing I can speak on is west side. West side Crips started right here in this park right in here 1970. Right, right here in this park. Right here in this park, 1970. Here's what your west side Crips started at. Now, you can have anybody else tell you it started someplace else, but they wasn't there. You can have somebody else tell you they know me and Big Bob and they're not of age and they wasn't in this park, they wasn't there. Because there's been so much you know, missing some information about the blue case, about me and Bob, and uh, we just want to, you know, this gives us an opportunity to straighten some things out. You guys were arrested along with about, I don't know, a half a dozen other people. Um, what happened after everybody got arrested? Okay, I'm gonna explain to you like this. When they came up to this park, they asked me for my ID. I was, I was playing ping pong. And so I gave them my ID and they said, we're not looking for you. They had some other people, and they were looking for them. And then when I went around the side of the park, they had James and Ricardo in the, in the, uh, in the squad car. So I went on about my everyday life. I said, well, they're not looking for me. I, you know, they had to do with it no way. The next thing I know was a car that my mama do about a week later, and my mother called him, and she asked me if I had anything to do with it, and I said no. So I went down to the Hollywood police station and never saw the streets again. Well, yeah, uh, with me, uh, they never came. The day they came and got me, they arrested me for the murder. It was a early, a week later, because uh, I got busted that morning, and Bob turned himself in that evening, that evening. after he got off of work. After I got but, off work. But, the, you know, they, they, they come like SWAT to get me, like I killed the, uh, the president's son. And I'm like, man, what's this? The last thing I remember, damn near 12 years later, but everything I remember was the look on my mother and father's face when I was in that patrol, patrol car and they was telling me I was arrested for a murder robber. You know, I'll never forget that look. You know, for something I had nothing to do with. But I guess that's, uh, it was meant to be, Bob. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. It, it was narrowed down to myself, Bob, Cuz, and uh, Ricardo. And uh, we have another crime partner named Eric, but he was a juvenile. So it was five of us who they nailed that crime down to and we all did time for it. Did you find it kind of unusual that they, they can pin a murder that was done by probably one person on five people, six, seven people? Right. How, 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 was that confusing to y'all back then? After, at first it was, but after they explained it to us, the, fe the murder felony doctrine rule, I understood it. Uh, if it wasn't for the robbery, the murder wouldn't have been. If it wasn't for the robbery, the murder would have never happened. Okay, now, if that was the case, Charles Alexander, the guy who got robbed, specifically pointed out in court who robbed him. Who took his jacket. He pointed him out. He pointed him out. And he specifically stated only one person robbed him. Now, how did I get that robbery? He said one person. And he pointed that person out. They got, you know how I was convicted? M myself and Bob and, uh, 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 and Ricardo, because of association with Cubs. They asked the guy who got robbed with a leather jacket the size of the people who was beat up his friend. It's about 130, 135, 140. 
I'm two I'm two hundred and fifty pounds, six three. You know, in a way he would have not identified me if I was whooping on his friend. I'm sitting back just watching. You know, the next thing I know, you know, I'm involved in a murder case. Because uh, one time they asked the guy, what did you uh what did you, what did you know about this case? He said, Oh, I kicked the guy too. And they couldn't use it. But if you kick the guy, why are you not charged for it? Yeah. Why are you not charging him for it and he kicked the guy? And he's telling the, 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 the DA that I kicked the guy. Oh, we can't use you as a witness. I found that out later on. You know, no. wow, that's that's ridiculous. Now, you're you identifying your guilt, but you're not but you're not being prosecuted. You're not for being that prosecuted guilt. for it. If that would have never happened in Hollywood, if it had happened from somewhere around here, it wouldn't have been that big. It would have been nothing. It would have been nothing. Would have been Another nothing. black but on since black it, killer. But since it was in Hollywood and it was at a soul train dance. The first one. First matter of fact, the first one in Hollywood. You know, in their neighborhood, that's why they publicized the way they did. And then the guy's daddy was an attorney. A prominent black attorney. Right. And he would, then I found out he went to school with the judge that was trying our case. Oh, yeah, the judge is Judge William B. King, the first judge to have a TV show on TV. On TV. When I got out, he had a TV show. I hurry up to him. Uh, yeah, Judge William B. William King. William B. King. I'll never forget that man. They try to use us to try to stop the gang violence. But that didn't do nothing but make it grow even worse. Check it. Gang violence wasn't as worse as it is now, or half as worse, or a quarter as worse as it is now when we went to prison. Because for one, we didn't have a one enemy. That was a chain gang. On the west side, Brim, we had in the Brim, gang, that's gang. it. You know, everybody Bonnie else. Bonnie Hunters. You know. Yeah, everybody else, we didn't. Now, we were fist fighters. We wasn't gun, you know. But wasn't nobody shooting nobody at that time. You had a problem with somebody, you had a fight. You know, you fight a guy in the street, you know. It wasn't about shooting, killing like it is today. It was just, you know, hand-on-hand -hand combat. So if you guys got into it with the chain gang or the brims, it would just be a fist fight? It would be a fist fight. A fist fight. Big old fist fight. But the guys in the, in the, in the, uh... In Eaglewood started Eaglewood, to shoot. they the ones started gang. to shoot. They the first ones started to shoot. We were, we go to the Academy show or the Fifth Avenue. One day we were coming down the street, I heard somebody say, Big Bob, I look. All I saw was fire come out of gun. And we all took off running. They the first ones started to shoot people in the Eaglewood. How'd y'all, what was that like when, when fighting turned to shooting? Everybody said, you gotta get guns. I committed about, I um, about four or five robbers, cause I had a gun. But I didn't rob Charles Foster. And if Robert Blue would have ran our way and tried to do anything to me or, or Cuz, he probably would have got shot. He wouldn't have got stomped with that. He'd have got shot. He got shot. If somebody wanted to see somebody, something happen. Like I say, it was guns out there. Somebody could have got shot. But it didn't happen that way. That's why I'm here today. Because of my daddy, Big Soda. He told me about the wars with the Brims, the wars with the Inglewood families. He's told me everything, so yeah, I'm, I'm up on my history. I think law enforcement knew that they had a, a loose cannon on their hand, but they couldn't do nothing about it.